So in my last vlog, which you can watch by clicking here, I talked about how it's problematic to think that we can find the meaning of an utterance or a text by asking what the author meant or intended. Also, Donald Trump. But that idea and Donald Trump beg the question, how does meaning work? And what's more, what happens when meaning, as it so often does, becomes the site of dispute? In a minute, I'm gonna be talking about hashtags, particularly the hashtag Black Lives Matter. But first, I'm gonna lay down some basics about a field of theory called semiotics. Semiology, or semiotics, is a branch of linguistics and theory that got its start with Ferdinand de Saussure, a French linguist in the early 1900s. Later on, semiotician Roland Barthes further developed semiotics to deal with a broader range and typology of signs. We'll probably be in dialogue with Barthes here and in other videos down the line, because he's hashtag the best. Anyway, so semiotics is really useful because it's the study of signs. Now, signs are not just stop signs and billboards and streetlights. As one definition puts it, semiotics takes in anything that conveys information to others who understand it in turn based on a system of codes and conventions that they have consciously learned or unconsciously internalized as members of a certain culture. More on that in a minute. Science can be words and utterances, sure, but as Barth puts it, semiotics is interested in any system of signification. This means images, gestures and body language, musical sounds, objects and artifacts, even articles of clothing. Also, hashtags. But before we move on, semiotics revolves around four main concepts that I want to lay down first. So for semiotics, the fundamental object of study is the sign. The sign is made up of two parts, the signifier, and the signified. Without getting too nitty gritty, the signifier is the word, image, or object itself. For instance, the red light on a stoplight. The signified is the mental image that the signifier brings to mind. For the red light, the signified is stop. The association of signified with signifier makes up the sign. The important thing here is that the signified already exists before any signifier has been associated with it. Like, we already have the concept of stopping at a busy intersection without a red light. Signs are conventional. All this means is that language and meaning belong to the public rather than to an author or an individual. When I use language, it's like I borrow from a publicly owned set of conventions. Signifiers and signifieds that we as a culture or subculture agree are associated in certain ways to mean things. In fact, this is the very thing that makes signs intelligible at all. If everyone just had their own private sign systems, then none of us would be able to really communicate with each other. Signs are arbitrary. In other words, signs do not arise somehow out of nature or by themselves. There's nothing about a red light that necessarily means stop. Several signifiers can stand for the same signified. For example, there's no real reason why the yellow light doesn't mean stop or the green light. Signs are differential. Because signs don't occur naturally, because they're arbitrary, this means that the only way we can know what a sign means in a text is by its difference from all other signs. The only reason we recognize the red light as stop is because it's not yellow or green. All this makes hashtags like those used on Twitter, Instagram, and increasingly so in our ordinary speech, so hashtag interesting. Hashtags are signs just like words, but they can also be used as containers for other signifieds. In his essay Myth Today, Bart calls this a second order signification, wherein a sign is taken up again and used as a signifier for another different signified. Which brings us to Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter is an activist organization founded by Patrice Colores, Opal Tometi, and Alicia Garza to counter anti-black racism amid a spate of high-profile violence against and systemically racist jurisprudence of black folks in the US. It started as a hashtag and continues to exist principally as a hashtag. Hashtag Black Lives Matter as a sign consists of an arbitrary signifier and a very specific signified. Namely this, that all lives should matter, but the experience of black people in America reveals that in practice, their lives seem to matter less and have for a long time. So yes, this hashtag signifies that descriptive statement about reality, but as it's used, it also signifies solidarity with black people as well as the normative statement that black lives ought to matter more. In this way, it functions much like other slogans, as philosopher of language Ian Olasov has written, link in the doobly-doo. Which then brings us to 
hashtag All Lives Matter. All Lives Matter started as a reaction to Black Lives Matter, and has often been criticized for its implicit racism and its erasure of specific grievances of black folks in the US. Remember that second order signification I was talking about before? So the sign, hashtag All Lives Matter, is what Bart calls a myth. So the deal with semiotic myths is that they take other signs and impoverish them of their original meaning in order to make a different meaning. While a mythical sign holds on to the conventional meaning of the original, like all lives matter wouldn't mean the same if black lives matter weren't a thing already, nevertheless, the mythical sign holds that meaning at a distance, Bart says. Hashtag all lives matter appropriates the sign hashtag black lives matter and in a way colonizes it for its own ends. As a statement, all lives matter should be something everyone can agree with. But as a mythical sign, it signifies more than just that. It erases the specificity of Black Lives Matter in favor of something vague and seemingly innocent, and therefore beyond critique. Even if the user of hashtag all lives matter doesn't intend to do this, the very existence of it as a mythical sign is not arbitrary, but motivated. But that reactionary motivation to avoid the messiness and discomfort and responsibility invoked by Black Lives Matter, and in so doing, the disqualification of black folks' specific grievances is absconded by the sense that all lives matter is merely true. Yeah, sure, all lives matter, but suddenly we're in a different place entirely. As Bart says, myth freezes or immobilizes intention. You can't do anything with all lives matter. And that's sort of the point. This is just scratching the surface of semiotics, but don't worry, we'll be using this in future videos for sure. We've seen a little now about how signs are used in a variety of ways, not just to relay information. So we might also ask, how else can we think about meaning? This is the second of a three-part series about how language and meaning work. I'll be trying to answer that question in next video, where I'll be talking about multifunctionality and performativity, where we ask not just what signs mean, but also what they do. If you don't want to miss it, now would be a great time to subscribe. Thanks for watching.